we're saved. And we're so stoked about that and so happy that we want to please our Father in Heaven by being obedient children. By following the rules He laid down. And those rules are Torah. Christians, you need to start keeping Torah. Christianity is a pagan religion. Y'all don't even know what you're doing anyway. Since leaving the Hebrew Roots Movement, I have come across some alarming information about how many Hebrew Roots members are leaving belief in Jesus to pursue full-blown Judaism. I recently came across video footage by three prominent rabbis who are well known in the world of Judaism, but very often also in the Hebrew Roots Movement. Many Hebrew Roots members listen to these rabbis to glean insight into the Old Testament they believe perhaps Gentiles are missing. I want you to hear what they have to say, and then I'll come back with more commentary on this, but keep in mind that Jewish rabbis often lump the Messianic movement and the Hebrew Roots movement together because they see the Hebrew Roots movement as an outset of the original Messianic movement. So what the second rabbi is calling Messianic includes both the Messianic church people as well as Hebrew Roots. What they're saying should be a red flag not only to Christians who know someone in this movement, but also to members of the Hebrew Roots and Torah observant communities. Hebrew Roots operates a lot like Judaism, so it's no surprise at what these men are saying. Many Hebrew Roots members may be thinking to themselves, this will never happen to me, or I've been Hebrew Roots for 20 years and I haven't left. But later in this video, I will share some video testimonies of people who were in the Messianic or Hebrew Roots movements for many years. Some of them even teachers and rabbis themselves and left to pursue Judaism. But for now, listen to Rabbi Tobiah Singer, Rabbi Michael Skoback and Rabbi Yosef Misrachi share their stories of how so many Messianics, including Hebrew Roots members, are converting to Judaism. Today, any rabbi who engages in conversions will tell you that probably at least 80 to 90 percent of the people today who are converting to Judaism went through the Messianic movement. They originally are attracted to the superficial trimmings of the Messianic movement. And then they start, you know, initially it's, whoa, so Jewish. Hanukkah, yeah, <laughs> Passover, fantastic. We have a sukkah, terrific. But after a while, the novelty wears off. Where's the substance behind it? And they want to study. And now there's YouTube. And now people could study. And then they go, wait, 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 wait. I just, I'm studying with Jews now and rabbis. And one of the things that also doesn't help the Messianic movement, those who have ever been involved in it, is that if you think that Jews don't get along with each other, you, you know the joke, you know, two Jews, three opinions. Uh, the joke about Messianics is, you know, two Messianics, five opinions. They are fight, they fight like crazy. That has a very big impact. People are going, wait, I thought this was like, I'm here and like, my messianic rabbi won't talk to the other messianic rabbi when you're both killing each other. It has a very big impact on people. Because they feel they've arrived and they're going, this is the same thing but worse. So the messianic movement became an instrument for non-Jews to come to the God of Israel. To either become B'nai Noach, righteous people, righteous Gentiles, or to convert to Judaism. Almost, almost all converts to Judaism in some measure had some relationship with the Messianic movement. That's what was needed to spark their interest, but it was never enough to satisfy it. Then what grew beyond that was a whole nother movement that sort of was just built on top of that. And that's called the Hebrew Roots Movement. So the Hebrew Roots Movement that you hear about is really focused on Gentiles. 
from the get-go to bring them to a more Jewish expression of Christianity. And then they make fun of Orthodox Jews that we are rabbinic Jews. Meanwhile, all they do is keep rabbinic Judaism. It's one of the strangest things. They'll say, oh, we don't believe in rabbinic Judaism like you Orthodox Jews. We believe in biblical Judaism and everything they do is rabbinic. And one of the strangest things occurred in the Messianic movement. The plan was to convert Jews, but something, something funny happened on the way to the conversion. <coughs> what happened was is that it be, the Messianic movement became very attractive, not to Jews, who, unless there is their soul right through it, but became very attractive to non-Jews, because non-Jews wanted something more Jewish. See, at this very moment in the Christian world, for reasons that I'm just not going to go into now, but after the Holocaust that had a very big impact on the Jewish people and so on the, on the church, that today anything Jewish is in. Okay? It's one of the strangest things, but right now we're living in a time in churches. If you can bring in anything Hebrew, if the pastor can wear talus, if you can have an Israeli flag flying there, that is in. Anything Jewish is in. There is an effort in the church to bring back what's called the Jewishness of Jesus, which the church believes it had abandoned, which made the Holocaust and other things possible. Do you understand this? This is a very strange thing that happened. So the Messianic movement, instead of attracting Jews, there are some Jews who got caught up into it, but it's a very tiny number. These Christians in the churches who felt, you know what, I've been going to this church for years and I just feel like I love Israel and everything and I, there's nothing really Jewish going on here, there's nothing in Hebrew here, and I don't think Jesus would have recognized this place if he'd walk in here. But the Messianic movement is perfect. I can continue to believe everything, everything that I believe in. I don't have to abandon anything, but I can do it in a Jewish way. So instead of the Messianic movement converting Jews to Christianity, it took Christians and brought them into this Messianic movement, which presents itself as Jewish. In core, in substance, it isn't. It's only rabbinic traditions that make it appear Jewish superficially. Now, what happened to these Christians in a Messianic congregation? Well, for the first six months, the first year, the first two years, this is great. You know, Jewish festivals, the whole deal. But after a while, they, they get so interested in Judaism, they continue to study more. And then they'll call a rabbi and say, you know, Rabbi, I'd love to study with you. And they'll go to a synagogue here in Manila or in New York or in Chicago, because it's just not enough. It's just superficial. I want the meat. And they start studying Judaism even more. They will insist that they are biblical Jews and that they don't practice a man-made rabbinic Judaism. And so the problem they face is that when you watch this movement up close, you'll find that virtually everything they do is based upon the practices of rabbinic Judaism, not upon what the Bible simply says. And so this convenient way of identifying themselves and distinguishing themselves from the Jewish community really in practice doesn't work out because all of their practices are rooted in the practices of rabbinic Judaism. The one last thing I'd like to share about the Messianic movement is that for a tremendous number of people, it's become a gateway out of Christianity, both among the Jewish people that are in the Messianic movement and the tremendous number of Gentile Christians that are drawn to the Messianic movement, they eventually find their way out of the movement towards a genuine practice of Judaism because they come to the realization that it's impossible to really embrace both Christian theology and Judaism, to embrace both what is today normative Protestant Christianity and the scriptures of the Hebrew Bible. And so probably the most significant aspect of this movement today is that it has become a, an exit point, an exit ramp out of Christianity for so many people, both Jews and Gentiles. So for the last few days, I realized something. I'm surprised that I did not realize it way before because I've been speaking about it for hundreds of times. I kind of realize what's going on here. It's scary to say it, but it's 100% the truth. I realize now that now in these days, in the last few months, there are more converts to Judaism more than ever before. I mean, I'm giving lectures for 23 years and I've dealt with hundreds of converts over the years. But now I realize that there's not a day, there's not a day, you cannot find one day 
without getting few emails of people that beg to convert to Judaism, and people with high quality goyim that are really in love with God and with the Torah and with my lectures or other speakers' lectures, they're in love with them, and even they are in love with the strict speakers, not the fakers, not the liberals, not the modern who teach and modify the Torah. No, they actually attracted to some of the strongest speakers on earth, whether it's in English, whether it's in different languages. It's very interesting. More and more goyim are begging to be Jewish, and many of them, their dream come through. So that means if this phenomena would continue another generation or two, probably the majority of the Jewish people will be descendants of converts. Unbelievable. At the very least, you have to ask yourself how a movement that is claiming to be bringing people back to their Jewish roots in Jesus has managed to lead so many people out of faith in Jesus, and this religion of Hebrew roots is fairly new. The term Hebrew roots was trademarked in 1994 by a couple named Dean and Susan Wheelock. Although many in the Hebrew Roots movement have ties to the former Worldwide Church of God, which was founded in the mid-1930s by Herbert W. Armstrong. Armstrong also taught an adherence to the law and keeping feast days, but he was not quite as strict as the Hebrew Roots movement, and this is what I find to be the most daunting aspect of the Hebrew Roots movement in general, and what seems to be the explanation as to why so many of them leave faith in Jesus altogether for Judaism. Because it seems like Rabbi Singer, as he points out, it's just never enough. They start out with freedom in Christ, which God gave to mankind starting in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve had freedom and a relationship with God, and really one main instruction, which was to abstain from one tree. But walking in relationship with the Lord and freedom was not enough for Eve. The serpent promised her knowledge to know the difference between good and evil, and she took it. In the same way, many of those in the Hebrew roots or Torah observing communities also seem to have a thirst for knowledge. Now, knowledge is not a bad thing if it's correct knowledge that builds up. But the dark side of Hebrew roots is that for far too many, knowledge puffs them up to a point that they look down on others, and particularly Christians in the Sunday churches. But I want to take a look at some other sources to get a better picture of how the Hebrew roots movement has led several Christians out of faith in Jesus and into Judaism. I want to talk first about what the Hebrew roots movement says about themselves. In this article called The Rise of the Hebrew Roots Movement, down in this section it says, this is the author saying this, Meet the Hebrew Roots Movement. On the surface, many of its followers might look like conservative or orthodox Jews. They keep kosher, observe the Sabbath, celebrate Passover, wear stars of David, and speak Hebrew. Some are circumcised and have beards and payos. They're extraordinarily pro-Israel and often place an emphasis on how many times they visited the country. This guy, Caleb Camaro, who's a 21-year-old member of the movement, said, a lot of the first believers in Jesus were Jewish. For me, getting closer to the lifestyle is getting closer to my Messiah. First of all, you don't get closer to your Messiah by doing things that are Jewish. This is more of him speaking. And he says, uh, nationwide, people are finding the Talmud above the Bible and reading it in Hebrew. Now, I don't know why any Hebrew roots person is reading the Talmud, but this might actually be part of the reason that people are leaving the Hebrew Roots Movement to actually join Judaism. The Talmud has all kinds of terrible things about Christians and about Jesus in it, and really casts a lot of doubt on who Jesus is and the Christian movement, according to them. It says, too, Hebrew Roots followers emphatically don't identify as Christian because they view contemporary Christians as strongly influenced by pagan culture. Now, I wanted to go over to this article this is called the Hebrew Roots Movement Following Jewish Customs But Worshipping Jesus. Now this tells a story about this guy named Jason, and Jason was trying to find a new way to express his faith. He discovered this guy, Yisrael Izzy Avraham, and he's the founder and executive director of the Holy Language Institute, and this article says he's the leader of the Hebrew Roots Movement. Now Izzy has defended himself in this article and says he's not, a, he's not even in Hebrew Roots, he's Messianic. You know, that can be the same difference to some people, but I just wanted to draw that your attention to that. You can read this article for yourself and, and decide what you think, but I wanted to just point that out since he does defend himself. But the point is, in this article, this guy Jason says that eventually he left the Hebrew Roots movement and went on to become part of the Jewish community, and he was a Noahide for a while, and now he's considering going to full-blown 
Judaism, but in this article it mentions this person named Nephores, who is now an Orthodox Jew, and she was also a Christian before. And so I want to go on to this article. This also mentions April Nephores, but I wanted to start out at the top because it's called Born Again All Over Again. These, this is stories of people who left Jesus to pursue Judaism. What was interesting to me is that the first sentence in this says, it all started with a question, on what day did Jesus die? The reason I think that's important is because Hebrew roots often cast doubt on things that Christianity teaches, and this is a very, very big thing in Hebrew roots. They do not believe that Jesus died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday. They say that since he would give the sign of Jonah and that he would be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, they say that he had to have died on a Wednesday and rose on a Saturday night. Now, I don't agree with that, and I do plan to do a video on why Jesus did die on Friday and raise most likely late Saturday night, very early Sunday morning. And I'll get into that in that video. And actually, I trace that back to the book of Exodus. But the, the point is that Hebrew roots are constantly putting the doubts in the minds of Christians about things that they're reading in scripture. And that is what is leading people to leave the Hebrew Roots Movement and actually pursue Judaism. They are very much leading people out. Now, this has a story of several different people that had left Christianity and gone to Judaism. But I wanted to get down to the story of April Nefores because she has started an organization that helps people leave Christianity. So here's Nefores, and how she got out was it says that she was uh, studying with a friend coming out of the Messianic movement, and she describes her journey in strikingly hybrid Christian Jewish language. She and I came out of idolatry together. Idolatry meaning coming out of Christianity. I could no longer go back to my church. Every time I drove by one, I was just, it was just graven images and idols. I fell ill going by them. Now, this is something else the Hebrew roots just drive into your mind constantly. They just want you to believe that everything the church does is pagan and graven images. And they take all this by a false history of where a lot of the things in the church came from. After I left the Hebrew roots movement, I started reading the early church fathers. I started researching Christmas and how it came about, why these things were added to the Christmas tradition, why Sunday became the new day of worship. Everything that the Hebrew roots teach about these things, they're getting from basically the wrong sources. They blame everything on the uh, Catholic Church and say the Catholics brought paganism in. And I'm not saying the Catholic Church is perfect. There's just all kinds of things that they have wrong and they're casting doubts in the minds of Christians, which is causing them to leave. But April Nefora, she started an online organization for Christians who want to leave their faith and transfer to Judaism. The organization that she started is actually this, Leaving Christianity and Finding Truth in Torah Judaism. Two of the leaders that are in this staff are Rabbi Tobias Singer and Rabbi Michael Skoback, who I showed earlier in the video. These two men are leading Christians out of Hebrew roots and the Messianic movement and moving them into one form of Judaism or another. Some are doing Noahide laws, some are come becoming Orthodox Jews. Well, this is very dangerous. The Hebrew roots are casting doubts in the minds of Christians on the Bible. And when you start doing that, you're bound to then listen to other people. A lot of people in the Hebrew roots movement listen to regular rabbis because they get this idea in their head that the rabbis, the Jewish rabbis, have information that Christians don't have. And that's a lot of ways that they also get pulled out of Christianity. I wanted to go back to this article, the one with the April Nefores and her Facebook group, Leaving Christianity and Finding the Truth. She also says that she has a private group for individuals not ready to expose their doubts. That means that there are people that are attending Hebrew Roots churches and even Christian churches, I'm willing to admit, that are, they're attending those churches with people who are on their way out. They're privately on some group learning Judaism while they're still in the churches. So we need to be careful who we listen to. I listened to the testimony of a pastor as well who said that he was leaving his uh, belief in Christianity, regular Christianity, and he was studying Hebrew roots online for months and then he realized that wasn't enough so he ended up going to believing in Judaism. Now he did end up leaving his church but how long he taught there and confused people is hard to say. 
I also knew a pastor personally who was the pastor of a Baptist church and he also was changing to the Hebrew roots and he was there for several months after that. He even told us how he was trying to show them about the law and they just weren't getting it so finally got frustrated and left but he took a couple families out with him when he left and to be honest that church ended up shutting down as far as i know they have not got a new pastor there is just no more baptist church there so satan is hard at work pulling out some of the best people pastors youth pastors music ministers elders he's just having his way through this hebrew roots movement and many of those people are going to move on eventually and leave christianity Here's another article. This man is Rico Cortez. He was one of the original founders of the Hebrew Roots movement, or one of the first people to start practicing the Hebrew Roots. He says, We spoke at length about the nature and role of Halakha, the codification of religious law in Judaism. Hebrew Roots, Cortez told me, doesn't have that. There isn't any sort of legal megastructure, and everyone is doing whatever makes sense to them. But a lot of them, he said, are getting it wrong. It's like the Wild West out there, he said. Now, when he says getting it wrong, what he means is they're not doing it the, the Jewish way. Okay, now I want to talk about this channel on YouTube. Uh, this guy here, William Hall, he runs this channel called Tanakh Talk. He has Rabbi Tavaya Singer on here all the time. Many of the people that give their testimonies about leaving Christianity talk about how they came in through listening a lot of times to Tavaya Singer. As you can see here, he's got 36. These are Testimony Tuesdays. All these people are all people who left the religion of Christianity and eventually came into Judaism. Now I've listened to almost all of these testimonies and about 90% of them came in through the Hebrew Roots movement. This one in particular was interesting to me because this guy was a Messianic teacher and he, sa he says he was a Messianic teacher. As you can see here, it says Christian Messianic teacher. He was actually Hebrew Roots. I know that because what he's about to say here uh, is a giveaway for that. So let's listen to him give his testimony here for a second. Uh, I was involved with God's Learning Channel uh, immediately in 2002, 2003, um, because Rabbi Chaim Richmond was a, uh, a, a teacher in Sam Peak uh, and Joseph Good. Okay, now I want to stop there because I want to talk about these three people that he just named. Rabbi Chaim Richmond is a Jew. He's actually, uh, he works for the Jewish Temple Institute. This guy t gave his testimony before this, talked about how he just came into the Hebrew Roots movement in 2001. Yet here he's saying that by 2002, he was teaching on God's Learning Channel. That's only a year of being in the ministry before they had him come on to this God's Learning Channel. Now also Joe Good, he's one of the founders, so one of the very beginning people from the Hebrew Roots movement. And then he also mentioned a third person, I forgot who that was, oh, Sam Peek. I don't know who Sam Peake is. I tried to look him up, can't find him. I've never heard of him, but uh, that was interesting to me that he said that. And I want to go on to another part where he talks about bringing some people into their church to speak. And I'm familiar with almost all of these teachers. So let me go ahead and let you listen to that. Our congregation, we had a hundred people every Shabbat and we were bringing in uh, teachers from all over the country, which would include Sam Peake, uh, 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 Heim, Rabbi Chaim Richman, hmm. uh, Ari uh, Obramowitz, uh, Jeremy Gimpel, uh, Bra uh, Brad Scott, Rico Cortez, Mani Judah, <coughs> Eddie Champney. Me, sorry. Uh, uh, we had uh, Rico Cortez, uh, right. Bill Cloud, every prominent Messianic teacher uh, that you could think of, I knew and uh, we, you know, I, I think the largest check I remember writing to those guys was a, a $15,000 check. Um, okay, now he says he wrote a $15,000 check to one of these guys. I don't know which one, but of all the people he's naming here, Brad Scott, he's another Hebrew Roots teacher. Uh, Abramowitz is a rabbi. He's a Jew. Jeremy Gimpel is a Jew. Rico Cortez, Hebrew Roots. Monty Judah, Hebrew Roots. Eddie Chumney, Hebrew Roots. Bill Cloud, Hebrew Roots. These are all Hebrew Roots teachers, yet this guy is saying that he was a messianic. Also, this guy here, William Hall, he came from a Christian background, and then he went over to, he says, the messianic movement, but again, I've listened to his testimony before, too, and he also was Hebrew Roots. And then he started, he left Hebrew Roots and then became a Noahide, which is what he is now, but he's kind of working towards, moving towards full-blown Judaism. But on this talk show, he has all kinds of prominent rabbis on here, and a lot of times the focus is on leading people out of Christianity and leading people out of the Hebrew Roots movement. 
I could go on and on and on. I read testimonies, watched videos, I went to Jewish source papers, even learned about how the Chabad organization is working tirelessly with the UN to use the Noahide laws to encompass all Gentiles under Judaism. You can even go here to Noahide.com where they even thank Nikki Haley for working to bring about world peace through the Noahide laws. In case you're not aware, the first law, No Idolatry, for the Chabad organization and for the Sanhedrin, which will be helping enforce these laws, includes no belief in Jesus. And according to the 1906 Jewish Encyclopedia, the punishment for breaking the Noahide laws, which would include belief in Jesus, is decapitation, as you can see here in the Jewish Encyclopedia under Noahide laws. The most vulnerable people to fall prey to this false teaching of Noahide are the sect of Hebrew roots that deny the deity of Jesus. I fear that many of them will have no problem denying Jesus. It states that no one may worship an idol in the way that it is normally worshipped, which perhaps leaves room to believe that Jesus lived on earth and was a good man, but was not the fullness of the Godhead manifested. If that is the case, many in the Hebrew Roots movement have already devalued Jesus, so that wouldn't be an issue for them. They may keep their head, but lose their soul in eternity. If the Hebrew Roots movement is so good and the right way to please God, then how could it be leading so many Christians out of the churches? into Hebrew roots, rejecting Jesus and converting to Judaism. There's no other religion on earth today that is sending people in droves to abandon Jesus and embrace Judaism. You may be thinking to yourself that this could never happen to you. The fact is, no one who gave their testimony on the show and no one who is a Noahide or a Jew now, after leaving the faith in Jesus, thought that they would leave either. And many throw out Paul, accusing him of heresy, or worse, others change the meaning of everything he said in order to protect the Mosaic Law from fading, when the law is not a proper noun. It means instructions. God never changes, but his instructions can change, and he already told us ahead of time that they would in the future. We are seeing the effects of what Judaism does to people over time. If the Jabad House is working behind the scenes to promote laws that will force the beheading of Christians, and if the Talmud is full of vile speech toward Christians and Jesus, what is it you're chasing after? This is where the law led them to, and many in the movement are already speaking vile words against Christians and against Jesus. I'm convinced that if the Hebrew Roots movement were to last another 2,000 years, it would become just as vile as Judaism has become. The movement is so new, no one can predict where it's headed. We have Rico Cortez worrying that people are not properly practicing the law. That sounds just like the rabbis of Jesus' day. And Hebrew Roots people claim that the instructions, or laws, do not earn us salvation, yet so many of them say that if we were really saved, you'd be keeping the law. That's really the same thing repackaged with different wording. I have watched too many of the more prominent voices in the Hebrew Roots also become more hateful and more judgmental and prideful over time, and honestly this is one of the reasons I left. I could see where this was leading. And since I have left and studied the Old Testament for answers to why Paul and the other apostles said what they said, I found my answers, and I didn't need to change their words or definitions or meanings to do it. If the noble Bereans were able to study the Old Testament scriptures to see if Paul's words be true, why are Hebrew roots having such a hard time doing the same? The law had a purpose. It was to heal the hard hearts and the stiff necks of Israel. God told Jeremiah that he gave them the law because they refused to listen to his voice. Abraham listened to his voice. Abraham walked in freedom and by the voice of God. Now we have the same opportunity to listen to his voice and walk in the freedom of both God and Christ, loving others and loving God above all else, and people are willing to just throw that away to pursue the instructions that were given specifically for a people who would not listen to God. And finally, and this is so important, don't think that the Hebrew Roots movement came about by a final movement of God before Jesus returns. It has come about in the same way that the Noahide law has crept into the world. While Hebrew Roots are so quick to blame everything on the Catholic Church and the Jesuits, they fail to understand that there's also a sect of Judaizers that crept in behind the scenes and infiltrated many of the churches in the Hebrew Roots movement. It's no accident that so many Christians are finding their way out of the church, through the Hebrew Roots movement, and into Judaism. We're nearing the end and all the pieces are falling into place for the Sanhedrin to be reinstated and the temple to be built and the false messiah to arrive and for Judaism to spread across the world and many Hebrew Roots people will be deceived. And yet we have so many famous Hebrew Roots leaders promoting the altar being dragged out in Israel with a dead lamb on December 10th last year. The deception is not Christianity, though it is far from perfect, but the deception is people forsaking Jesus to join Judaism and the religion leading them to it is the Hebrew Roots. I have many brothers and sisters in the Hebrew Roots that I know love the Lord, and I have waited to make this video because I certainly don't want to hurt anyone, but what kind of love would I show if I knew they were at risk of being lost in the future? 
So many in the Hebrew roots deny who Jesus is now. How much more when your life depends on it? And quite frankly, I'm just tired. I'm tired of holding back and worrying anymore. In love, I had to make this video or it would have continued weighing on my heart. Since I left, only one person ever even asked me what passages I looked to that helped me realize why I had to leave. Everyone thought of me as a good researcher and Bible studier until I left. And yet, if I was such a good student of the scripture, then why would they never want to know? And I brought up multiple things before I left, but if they went against the accepted dogma of the Hebrew roots, it was shot down, regardless of what proof I brought from the scripture, even from the Old Testament. I pray for my friends that are still in Hebrew roots. I'm still the same person. I still study the Bible every day, even more now than I ever did before. I still pray and I still love the Hebrew roots people. But at some point you have to get out or it'll just suck the spirit out of you and you just have to pray for people to wake up to the deception. If you're considering leaving the Hebrew Roots Movement or if you're in need of help for recovery, please leave a message below and I will find a way to contact you. It's hard to leave, I know. Some have spent so much time criticizing their Christian brethren and sisters that it's hard to know how to fix those relationships and even to forgive yourself. God loves you and he's not more pleased with you when you don't eat pork or you wear a tassel or you keep a feast day or avoid wearing cotton and linen or say his name in a certain way. He knows his sheep, and his sheep know him, regardless of how they pronounce his name. He loves you when you love him and love others because his spirit enables you to. I want you to watch one last clip from this very well-studied man. People who hear this will think this man is a conspiracy theorist, but let me explain who he is. This man is a Jew who grew up attending a yeshiva, which is a school for boys, and he's met with many leaders in Israel. He reads and speaks Hebrew, and he was a former CIA agent and practicer of true Messianic Judaism that is not Zionist or teaching that Gentiles must keep the instructions given to Israel through Moses, which was to lead them to Jesus. He and his wife have exposed the Talmud and the darkness behind the curtain in Judaism. He's telling the truth as I've been researching myself to see how all this came about. I was actually very surprised to hear him say this because I know for a fact they came to my town in December of 2018 and it was hosted by many in the Hebrew Roots movement and many Hebrew Roots people attended his conference. So I am sure it was not easy for him to say this, but he tries to always be a man of truth. And while I don't always agree with him on this, for my own research, he is correct. But uh, the Hebrew Roots movement, uh, something I'm planning on doing a very serious video about in the very near future about how that there has been much uh, infiltration and uh, from the very beginning of this movement in order to draw Christians back to Judaism. And you may not realize what the ultimate goal of this was. There have been CIA operatives, FBI uh, uh, infiltrations into the organization. There are leaders that work with them uh, that work also with Mossad and uh, others and Jesuits that have infiltrated these organizations here uh, to be able to get the people to move towards Judaism. And, uh, and in fact, it is the one group of people that have had a, the, the largest number of members of any organization in Christianity in the world was the Hebrew Roots Movement that have gone back to Judaism. We're gonna go into a, a broadcast about that in the very near future so you can see what was really going on in behind the scenes. I plan to make a video about this soon as well. Until then, remember this. For what the law, or instructions, could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law, in other words, the part of the law that actually made men righteous, like love, mercy, kindness, listening to the voice of God, might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Shalom, friends. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.